Britain's Digital Railway. Oh, whew. gosh, it's boiling down here. I could cook an egg. I feel like I am an egg, a boiled one. Why is it so hot down here? It's the dragons, right? You'll be happy, or maybe disappointed to hear, that there aren't any dragons on the London Underground. But it certainly can get hot down there. Trains push air through the tunnels, which helps to cool things down a bit. Ventilation shafts suck out hot air, and sometimes fans are used on hot stations to create a cool breeze. But why does the underground get so hot? It's all because of how the tube network was built. Let's take a closer look. There are three types of lines. Lines that travel in the open, subsurface lines, which are just below street level, and the tube proper, which runs through tunnels. Now, you won't get too hot on the open lines, unless it's a sunny day, and the subsurface tunnels tend to stay cool too. That's because, as they were built for steam trains, they needed lots of ventilation to remove the smoke. Today, this ventilation brings fresh air in, which helps keep things cool. These lines are also larger than the deep tube tunnels, which means that trains on these lines can be fitted with air conditioning, with the heat vented away thanks to the old steam train ventilation. However, it's the deep level tube tunnels that cause the biggest problems for passengers and staff. Most deep level tunnels were built through London clay. When the tunnels were dug, they were so cool that the tube was seen as the respite from the summer heat on the surface. The problem is that over time, heat from the train soaked into the clay to the point where it can no longer absorb any more heat. Tunnels that were a mere 14 degrees Celsius in the 1900s can now have air temperatures as high as 30 degrees Celsius. So where is all this heat coming from? As you would expect, most of it is from the trains themselves. All those moving parts generate a lot of energy, which results in heat, especially when trains are braking. I suppose they need to come up with new ideas to cool things down. Why don't they, I don't know, I mean, make the platforms out of blocks of ice? Like that crazy hotel made of ice, that would cool everybody down. Might end up as a puddle though first. Actually, ice packs on board trains can be used to soak up excess heat. The only trouble is, they would take up precious space, so less room for passengers. They would also add weight to the train, which would mean more energy to move them. Over the years, engineers have tried to come up with new ways to get the temperatures lower. Regenerative brakes can convert heat back into electricity for use by other trains on the tracks. And modern tube lines are built with considerably more ventilation shafts than older tunnels were. Whilst building more ventilation shafts on the older tube tunnels is an option, it can be complicated. You have to think about what's above the tunnels and the people who live nearby. Engineers have also looked at using cold water. An experiment at Victoria used water from the River Tyburn to cool the air in the station. And at Green Park, five boreholes drilled deep into the ground suck cool water to the surface to cool a separate water supply, which is pumped down to cool the platforms. As once the circulating water is warmed up, it's pumped away. You see, I wouldn't mind all this heat if I was at home on a winter's day or stuck outside in the snow. Shame they can't share it round. The guys have got the right idea. Heat has to go somewhere. It could be reused, for example, to heat homes and offices or the platforms on non-underground stations. Ah, here comes a breeze. It means a tube train is coming. Or maybe it's a dragon after all. Britain's Digital Railway, with support from the Royal Academy of Engineering. Find out more at bunkidslive.com slash railway.